Murray, thanks very much for taking uh, a bit of time to, to talk to us um, this afternoon. You're all, all set for tomorrow? Looking forward to it very much, Vegas. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's always a highlight in the calendar, isn't it? You've been coming here for, for, for many years, both as a, as a competitor and adjudicator. Yeah, so 1974, 1975, the championship started in 74. 75 was my first year and um, had a long stint competing, um, qualified each year until 95, and then had a wee break away from competing and managed to qualify again two or three more times. Um, and this will be my third uh, visit as a judge. And have you judged, you've judged both sections of the event? No, the last twice that I've judged here, uh, I've done the MSR both times. Patricia, my wife, has been on the P Rook both times. So um, I did the MSR twice, right. so the first, first time on the P Rook. Right. Are you looking forward to it? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, these guys are, you know, they're the top of the tree. They're the, the best of the best, uh, going by this year's results. And you've been competing with a lot of them for the last 40 years. Hmm, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Some of them. Some, some of, of them. Some of the, the more senior ones. Um, Are we noticing a slight change in the guard in some respects? There's, a, there's, there's, a, there's, a bund there's a quite a wee bundle of younger players coming through to compete mm. over the last couple of years, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I don't think I'd explain it as a as a changing of the guard. Um, you know, with the two gold medals automatically qualifying, you're always going to get some of the younger one, the younger ones, coming through. Um, so that that always keeps it fresh and and keeps it um, youngish. But you know, the the experienced players. Well, I, I think if you if you consider the history of the Glenfiddich. Uh, so this will be the 49th is event. Indeed, yeah. um, so there's only been 17 winners of the event. I, I find that quite amazing. So the obviously several players have won it multiple times. And I think that tells you a lot about um, what's happened over the history of the Grand Fiddick. There's always been younger ones coming through. Um, and being very successful, and, and they might now take, take that forward. But I, n I never see a, a changing of the guard. It's a natural evolution. It's a gradual evolution. progression. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And when I first played here, um, you know, John Burgess, Pi Major Angus MacDonald, Ian McFadden, Hugh McCallum, Ian Mar you know, the, 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 the greats of, of that time. So I suppose I was, you know, well, I was the youngest competitor at, at that time. But no one saw that as the changing of the guard, simply because I was coming mm -hmm. in and managed to be reasonably successful quite early uh, in my Glenfiddich career. So I think it's, you know, like I say, these are, these are the best of the best that we've got. And um, I think it's tremendous. Our future, our piping future, are the ones that are coming up. But it's nice that the, the, the more mature players can, can That's still. a nice way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> so when you sit down there tomorrow morning and the knowledge that you've got 10, the, 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 let's call it the 10 best pipers in the world this year because they, they've all qualified yes. by winning one of the qualifying events, what, what are you looking for from, from these guys tomorrow? Nothing more than I would look for at any competition at any level. Um, obviously, the standard at the Glenfiddich is the pinnacle, but as an adjudicator, I'm I'm always looking for high entertainment value, and by that I mean musicality. You know, entertain me through music. The standard of the instrument obviously plays a big part. Um, you know, it probably goes without saying that the standard of the instrument tomorrow will be exceedingly high. Um, technical security. So once those two boxes are ticked, and to be successful at a high level, those two boxes should be a given. Um, That's the instrument and the technical. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. So, so you can almost take them for granted tomorrow. I mean, things can change and. Things can happen 
during the course of a performance. But if we consider the, these are all experienced players and they thrive in the, in, in the high octane, the challenging events. So if you take those two components away, what are we left with? And it's making music. And I, I want to hear nice, nice subtle pulsing and phrasing, no matter what anyone's style is. Because um, sometimes people may favor one style over another style. I am very open-minded uh, on that front, but my musical principles don't change when I'm listening to different styles. So I want to hear nice subtle pulsing and phrasing. I want to hear nice adjustment of pacing through the pieces so that they build and come back and build. And, and I want to be taken on a musical journey. And is that, is that more difficult with some P Brooks than with others? Do, 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 does the tune that the competitor play tomorrow impact the, the, the difficulty with which they can make that musical journey entertaining for you? Well, I think when it's tunes of own choice, as it is for tomorrow, so these competitors have submitted six of everything. I don't think anyone will have submitted a piece that they couldn't produce the description that I'm talking about. I mean, that, you know, choice of tunes is really crucial. And if there are set tunes for Oban and Vaness, you're, you may be restricted in how, uh, how much flair you can bring to a piece. But I think when, when it's your own choice, you know, these competitors are all, they're all smart. They'll, they'll have good tunes and that they can uh, show off to their ultimate ability. And should that make it a more entertaining day for audience and adjudicator alike? Mm, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, totally. Sometimes with set tunes, um, they may not be as favourable music. They might not naturally be as musical or, you know, there could be things about them that players don't necessarily like. Give them the six that they want to play and they'll entertain us, all right. You've talked about the, the bagpipe and, and, and the technical ability and then you've talked about musicality. Can there be a conflict between these two groups? So if you hear, if you hear the most musical performance that you've ever heard tomorrow, but the bagpipe is a little bit off or the, the technical ability slips a little bit at some point during that really musical performance, how, how do you judge that? So I think this is where judging experience plays a big part because um, you, you have to learn how to assess as a whole. But it's, it would be quite unusual over the history of the Glenfiddich or other senior events, the class, the senior at Oban, Silver Chanders, etc. It would be unusual to have a first prize going to a performance where the bagpipe was, wasn't in tune or didn't have technical security. You know, when, when we get 10 competitors tomorrow, um, it would be a strong person that would bet against um, someone not ticking the three boxes. And, uh, and what we're looking for as adjudicators is having 10 performances ticking those boxes, so that then you can actually, so you might say, well, the instrument was steady, but what was the quality of sound? Um, musicality, yeah, so then you start looking at the nitty gritty and, um, and just little touches, the tiniest little things uh, can make a difference when yeah. you're assessing the final prize list. And then I suppose if we're looking at an overall champion, you've got to multiply that by two because they've each got to do it in the morning and maintain that, that stability and musicality and credibility in the afternoon. Absolutely. And, you know, when it comes to the afternoon section, that's, that's when the heat gets turned up, really, because if, if you feel that you've had a pretty decent run in the p rock leg, um, by the time you come to the second time through your reel, um, you know, well, when the going gets tough, the tough get going.
But did you do that when you were competing? Was oh, it, yes. Did you play the same reel twice, the same MSR twice through each tune when you were playing? That has never changed. Uh, the, the, the tune requirement has never changed um, in the history of, of the Glenfiddich. And that's a tougher way to, to, to test it? Yeah, so, so if you're playing a double MSR, two different marches, two different stress plays, two different reels, um, you've got more breaks to consider, so the makeup of your order of play can be quite crucial. When you're given three tunes and you play each discipline twice, uh, I think that probably is the tougher one of the of the two ways to do it, um, because you know I've seen over the years that. The, the really good players, maybe if they have a wee grace note change or something the first time through, they'll be clever enough to repeat it the second time through. Um, but the, a lot of pressure when you're playing the same reel second time through. And that's where I'm sure some of them will have practiced their reels three times through. So that in the heat of the battle, it's mm. twice through and it's all no, finished. Um, but it's all about the approach and being nice and nice and calm. Good. But you've got an association with this competition that goes back to almost day one. Mm. For, for, for those who are watching perhaps from other parts of the world that haven't managed to, um, you know, to, to, to get to, to, to Blair Castle, just try and sum up to, for me and, 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 and for them what it is that makes this such a special event. Well, I mean, it's grown in, with tradition. The, the, I mean, imagine the vision of Chairman Sandy Grant Gordon uh, when, when it was floated in 1974 that there was going to be an invitational competition. And, you know, let's bear in mind, this is, this is the first invitational competition in the UK anyway. Um, and the vision that he had and the legacy that he's left us, because now... Um, Everyone wants to qualify for the Glenfiddich. People want to travel from the other side of the world to come and listen at the Glenfiddich. So the stature has grown um, simply because of the, of the formula. And it's the most majestic hall that I've ever played in. Um, two locations spring to mind. Uh, I go out and tutor it for the Celtic Arts Foundation out in Seattle. And our concert there is generally held in the, uh, the concert hall in Seattle, purpose-built for the Seattle Symphony Orchestra. And that venue and the Grand Hall at Blair Castle are the two most exquisite places that I've had the pleasure of playing in front of. Um, and I think the, the, the Blair Castle gets it. So that, the, the sound that you're going to hear tomorrow is something that I don't think you hear in any other venue in the UK. So that gives it a presence. The, the hall itself, um, with the structure and the antlers around, you know, set the scene. And then you have Piper after Piper coming along, um, producing these elite performances. You know, well, you could almost think you're in heaven. So I, I think it just tells us, it shows us everything that is good about competitive piping. It's it's just something that, in, well, in New Zealand, growing up, every young lad dreams about being an All Black. In the piping world, every young piper, solo piper, aspires to being invited to the Glenfiddich. And I don't think you can put it on a higher pedestal than that. So you must be a very happy man then that you've managed to, to be invited so many times, both as a competitor and an adjudicator. Oh, it's an uh, honour. Always an honour to, to be invited as a, to qualify for it. And what an honour to come and sit behind the desk. Good. Murray, thanks very much for talking to us. Have a good day tomorrow. You're welcome. You too. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you.